So I've put my uh, LCD on a breadboard, or rather two breadboards joined together because this thing won't fit between these two. Yeah, no, these are all fucking breadboards anyway. I have built up a little three volt circuit and running it off a external five volt DC power supply anyway. <coughs> and I'm really suspect, suspicious about this thing because it says according to the data sheet I found that pin 1 and pin 40 should be connected together. Now how do I know these two are pin 1 and pin 40? Well if you look at the data sheet that's attached that pin 1 should be on this side where the decimal places are and decimal places aren't on that side but they are on that side and as you can see now that's just touching with the multimeter not volts probe and nothing and even to go between these two pins, continue, uh, use a continuity tester between these two pins, and it doesn't work. It's not joined together, so... I don't know. Data sheet doesn't exist. The only information I found for it was JCAR rather than RS. Uh, I think I, I'll be wasting my time with this. Probably not worth the effort. Oh well. So I thought I'd move on to the... Uh, a multiplexed uh, a, a seven segment display and I've soldered a uh, pin header on it so the blue text just there to hold it in place whilst I work on it so I've soldered a pin header on it so I can stick it in a breadboard and I've come up with a circuit oh, oh yeah, uh, this thing here by the way um, it's a really cheap <laughs> and by cheap I mean it was three quid from a uh, a discount store. I have no idea what the store was called. It was uh, it was a place where you pay for everything by cart. But these are in the back, and I thought three quid that's not too bad for a third hand stand with a really crap um, magnifying glass, and it's got a little LED underneath so you can shine a light on your work. Oh, yeah, and a little uh, stand for your soldering iron. A little hole for your a sponge. I thought, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> For three quid? Meh. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Okay, so this is a diagram of the test jig I've um, built up. So this test jig is based on a 74LS47, uh, which is the nearest alternative I could find uh, to the 74LS247, which was shown in that expert I found on Google Docs. Sorry, Google Books. Uh, links down below. So the BCD inputs A, B, C, and D are connected to a dip switch array, and, um, and these are obviously with four pull-up resistors. And um, the connections uh, B I uh, slash R B O and R B I, which are pins four and five, uh, we're ignoring them for now. And I've connected uh, RBI, which is pin 5, to 5 volts, and BI slash RBO, to pit, which is pin 4, to ground, as per the tooth table in the data sheet. Because they're really, the one's a don't care statement, and the other one has to be pulled high. Uh, so, I will first ground, though, this signal, uh, not LT. Uh, LT stands for light test mode. From the truth table, you can see that this will turn on all the segments in each display. Uh, this will be a good health indicator to start with, and then use this dip switch array to um, to hopefully change the digits to be displayed on our uh, multiplex display. Okay, so the theory behind using a multiplex display is you turn on, i.e., you power, you supply power to each. Uh, digit in turn then you set the digit to be displayed and then repeat for the next digit you do this very fast uh, as the display only has one data bus which is this so what you're doing is you, well, you're multiplexing you're basically setting the data and setting the display to show that data uh, as you can see from the expert that I was linking below, uh, this is done by another set of control lines uh, switching power to each digit via a PNP transistor. So essentially it's uh, active low control. So 1111 would mean all the digits are off. 
So to set the display, say, to 1, 2, 3, 4, you would first power the first digit, set the BCD input uh, to the 7447 to uh, 1, then turn off the first digit, turn on the second digit and then and then send the BCD in, set the BCD input to 2 and then you repeat for the third and fourth and then repeat the whole process really quickly to display hopefully 1, 2, 3, 4 so first one off, second one on, 2, second one off, third one on, 3, third one off, fourth one on, 4 Fourth one off, repeat. And you just do it really quickly like that. So on the display unit, which is here, pins 4, 7, 10, and 14 are the common anode connections to all the segments for each digit. So what I've done is connected them all to 5 volts, which means that I don't have to worry about um, control lines to turn on the power to each digit. So what I've done is I've connected all of them to 5 volts so that when I do change the BCD input, all the digits will display the same number. Uh, so I change this to 1, they'll all be 1, change this to 2, they'll all be 2, so on and so forth. And uh, these 7 270 ohm resistors are just current limiting for the LED segments. Right, so we'll give it a whirl. Right. As a problem, as you can see, is that uh, segment D is not working, and uh, this is actually, this is open collector, and it is actually pulling it down uh, through the uh, dropper resistor, but um, it's just not working. I mean, I've taken this out, and I've even measured that this is pulling current through the dropper resistor through segment D, which is pin two, and it's just not having it. So there's something wrong with this display. So even though it came out of a fresh packet, yeah, doesn't necessarily mean it's working or it should work straight out of it. Mind you, this thing, that thing's probably really ancient. Oh well, well, two displays not working. Never mind. Uh, still. Got a lot of batteries to test, which is what I'm going to be doing next.